for today, I would show you guys the ways that you could incorporate digital backdrops into your studio photography. So let's start with separating our subject from the background. I do think it's very important to shoot against the background. That's very easy to separate your subject from. Now we're going to go to select. You are shooting um, with your subject contrasted against the background. Color range is actually great because it means it will just grab that color making sure that the eyedropper tool is selected. You're just going to select anywhere on that blue and select the plus and just select the rest of the blue gradients that have naturally fallen off where the lighting is. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. The next option is selecting the subject. Again, in the select panel, you can go down to select subject. We can see it actually did a much more nuanced mm. select. And you see, it didn't do the best job on the mm. uh, bag, whereas this did a pretty grand job. So for example, I could do a little cheeky trick here. And then in this layer mask, I could delete everything else that I don't need. And eventually we will get to a place where we've got that back. So as you saw, her hair had a lot of these flyaways. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I just use like a general brush. I'm gonna go now to window to brush settings. I'm going to click on Shape Dynamics. I'm going to go to Fade, and then I'm going to change the fade to 500, perhaps. As you can see, the brush tapers off at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and start quickly selecting colors from the head and just drawing these flyaways. Now we're going to blend it in. This is honestly my favorite thing, layer masks. The most versatile thing in Photoshop are these layer masks. They just help you have such control, making sure that my layer mask is selected and make sure that my brush tool is set to black. Lightly, lightly with my brush strokes, those edges of the hair are being blended into her head. And uh, voila, we've got some hair. You can go in with the blur tool and blur this a little bit. So we've brought our backdrop in, we like it. How do we make it look real? First thing, blur it a little bit in the background because again, of the natural fall off of that depth of field. For blurring, there's a couple of ways. One is a Gaussian blur, which is pretty much what most people do. And I'm going to go to my adjustment panel, I'm going to go to brightness and contrast and just reduce the brightness a tad. Um, I like to add my shadow just going to the curves panel and dragging the middle pointer down. So the lighting is coming from this side. So I guess the shadow would be falling on this side. I'm going to open up a new layer. I'm going to call it color. Now over here in the drop down menu, I'm going to go ahead and set that to a color blend mode. I'm going to clip that using the option tool, hovering between the layers. I'm going to clip it. Now anything that I brush on this color layer is only going to affect my subject. I'm going to set my flow to low. I usually like to leave my flow to around 9%. Now, as you can see, I'm just selecting from the hair and I'm just lightly brushing. And all of that blue wow. is slowly but surely melting away. And voila, just like that, she's embedded into the scene. All right. Well, thank right. you so much for joining us today, Bella. We really appreciate it. Your work is absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Bye. <laughs>